day has finally come. We're gonna tackle the seat heater harness. Getting things torn apart on the back of the uh, Suburban here. Getting this frame and this wiring all exposed. I'm gonna be installing some lighting in the back hatch here. But before I can do that, I gotta make sure that I have power wire run to the back of the truck. And I'm exposing the sill plates, which doesn't look like there's a whole lot of room to run any wiring in. Looks like we had this eight gauge wire right here routed in there. And then here's some old wire left over from when this was a police vehicle or a game warden truck. But that's about all we can fit in there. So right now I've got the A pillar, the B pillar, and the C pillar taken off. And I've exposed the headliner area. And right up in here, see this white bag? That's actually the curtain airbags. But there is a whole bunch of room all the way behind that curtain airbag in this truck. So what we're gonna end up doing is I'm pulling this harness out and we're gonna disconnect that and then add it to the charging harness for the Goal Zero, make it into one big harness and then we'll make our connection at the battery. But I'm going to most likely repurpose this cable for our solar cable. It's gonna be hopefully running off of the hood and then down the, uh, the hinge mechanism for that. This cable right here that's left over from its previous life, you can see where that comes through right here. And then somebody has installed a butt connector and a fuse tapping splice. Probably gonna end up having to pull the seats out of this truck to be able to trace that wire and get it removed. All right, so I discovered where the mystery wire went. It comes into this and it goes to the center console here. And once I pull that off, I'm guessing that this is probably powering these relays here because this truck is equipped with aftermarket seat heaters right here. And just like that, center console is now out of the truck. We have all kinds of room for activities in here. You can see where this cable here for the seat heaters is just kind of drawn across the top of the SRS or the airbag control module and these two studs are exposed. So if this were to get pinched right here, that would actually chafe through that wire and cause a short circuit. So like I said, they did a decent job in some areas and they thought ahead a little bit, but this really should be protecting the entire wire. So again, we're gonna clean all that stuff up and make this thing right. So right now I'm working on taking this harness out and I followed the power wire over. It goes into this loom here, but they've got it grounded underneath this stud right here where the factory harness is tied in. And the wire is wrapped around the stud. This is a no-no. This is, this is a big no-no. Granted, this is a ground wire, but this can create high resistance and could potentially cause an electrical fire. This jute right here, that's like a tinder box. So we, it's a good thing that we decided to explore this a little bit further and fix this harness here. It has been pinched and chafing on something, most likely one of the studs or down here on the head of that screw as well. So that was a fire waiting to happen. Now, to be honest, it's not the worst job I've ever seen and it works. Don't get me wrong, everything that that harness is, is, is doing is working just fine. It's just, it, it really needs like just that little bit more to be correct. So it's really not gonna be a complicated fix. I mean, honestly, if we took the ground wires and crimped new terminals onto them and then bolted them back down in a proper place, it would be fine. That and protect the power wire. But we're gonna clean it up a little bit more than that and just go that extra little step to make it a clean professional install and something that we're not going to have to worry about ever causing a vehicle fire. This is where electrical problems can go south really, really quick. Well, it's time to build a harness. We're going to build a harness and it's going to be a simple one for the seat heater circuit. This is a harness that you guys saw me pull out earlier that was basically just screwed into the floor and the wire was wrapped around the screw. So we're going to 
redo that harness and make it correct for this vehicle. So I'm going to show you guys step by step how I build a harness. And like I said, this is a very simple one, so it shouldn't be that difficult. The first thing that we need to figure out is the distance from the center of this seat to the center of that seat. Roughly 40 inches. It's obviously it's 20 inches to the center, 20 inches to the center. And then we need to go up to the electronics tray, which is roughly anywhere between 20 to 24 inches. So here you can see the harness that I pulled out of the truck. I've already measured out my 40 inches on the floor from connector to connector. So that's 40 inches there. We know that at 20 inches, this wire into 20, just like that. Okay, so that's our harness coming in. And then we need roughly 20 to 24 inches to the front, which will put us pretty much at the end of this length. I think we're sitting about 28 inches up here at the front. So this is the rough shape of the harness. These connections that they had on here before actually aren't that bad and they used uh, sealed solder connectors to make these junctions. They're not just crimp connectors. So they did a really good job at this part, but where they severely messed up was this right here, wrapping a bare wire around a screw. That's just not gonna cut it. So what I'm gonna do is trim that off and then we're actually gonna crimp some ring terminals onto those. And then I'm gonna take my wire stripping tool We're going to strip these back, just like that, and then twist those together. Now at this point in time, the connection that you use, you could use a single pin weather pack, you could use a double pin weather pack and run your grounds to the exact same harness, and then ground the other side of it to a chassis ground, but I already know that there are ground studs underneath the seats. So I'm just going to put ring terminals because there's no reason to run more wire all the way back here. And to be honest, this wire could actually come in and they could actually tie right there. And you could put another joint right there if you really wanted to, but I find it easier just to do this. That way I have a little bit more slack to work with too if I need to. This instance, I'm going to use an Anderson power pole connector. These are basically mini versions of regular Anderson uh, connector and they have a 10 amp, a, I believe a 10 amp, a 15 amp, and a 30 amp pin. And because of how big this grouping of wires is here, I'm probably going to have to use the 30 amp terminal. So before I crimp that, I suppose I should probably show you the tools I'm using here. So this is an automatic wire stripper. This one's made by Maco, but there are hundreds of copies out there now. This is when they first came out with them. I bought this tool. But basically, you insert your wire into the end. And as I push this down, those two jaws come together, pinch the wire sheathing, and then remove the wire sheathing, exposing the wire. The tool that I'm gonna use for the Anderson uh, power pole terminal is actually a specialized crimping tool for that very uh, terminal. You can actually use these on other butt connectors as well. But like I said, this is a ratcheting tool. So by squeezing it, I've now re released it. It has a holder right here that the terminal would sit in. And then as you can see up here at the top, see those little divots or tits inside the uh, crimping tool there? What that does is as the terminal comes up, it forms it and pushes it back down into the wire. So like I said, this is specifically made for those power pole connectors. You can actually remove this block and use it on regular terminals as well. But as I squeeze, see how it's locking in place? It's not gonna release until you get all the way to the release point. This tool here is actually for weather pack connectors. And if you notice, it's got the exact same things on its dies as well. So you could get away with a weather pack uh, crimper for doing this style connector as well, but I'm gonna use the ratcheting style. And the very last thing I'm going to use, well actually this is probably gonna be the first tool I'm gonna use, is the good old terminal crimps. This would be for crimping a buck connector, stripping wires, I mean this is the, probably the cheapest crimping tool you can get. And you can usually buy these at auto parts stores or Home Depot or Lowe's. I'm not going to use this to make the crimp and it'll make sense here in a second why I have this out. But basically the terminal here is spread so far open 
that if I try to crimp it in my die here, it'll actually catch the one side and push it down. So I need to partially close this up a little bit after I set the wires in. We're going to insert our terminal just like this, and then I'm going to give it a slight squeeze just like that so it fits in my crimper. And the other thing is you want your wire, notice you got another set of tabs, your wire is gonna sit up basically to the end of that. It's not gonna go way up here like this. It's gonna sit right about there. And it's okay to have a little bit of wire exposed out the backside like this. I'm gonna take my ratcheting tool and I'm gonna load this in until it's fully seated. And then I'm going to begin to squeeze this down. And that's fully crimped right there. So now when I pull this out, you can see how it rolled those V edges down into the cabling. Now that's a proper crimp. There's no way I'm pulling this apart. And that's exactly what you want. If you have one of these that's bowed out to the side or you know, sticking straight up, or sometimes they'll even fracture, then you need to check the setting on your tool, or you know, potentially you didn't squeeze it so it fit that die properly and it damaged it when it did it. If it does that, then you're gonna have to take that off and basically recrimp it. Now, this would be the point that if you were just going to install your connector at this point, you would want to put some type of heat shrink on here to overlap the back side of this. Now, I'm actually going to be putting sheathing on this and the heat shrink that I have to use is somewhat larger. So I can actually fit that over both of these once it's installed. But again, if you were just going to heat shrink this here and wrap this in tape or you had very fine sheathing, now would be the time to put that on before you put this on because you might not be able to get your heat shrink on. Um, now, if you notice on the Anderson power pole connector, the tab or the end of it is curved. Inside is actually a little metal tab. And the reason I just grabbed another one is this one's defective. It's actually missing that tab. So that's junk. It can't do anything with that one. This one here, see this little tab right here? That's going to engage the end of this tab. It's gonna actually clip over it. And you're going to insert it. There, it's fully engaged and that is locked into place. Now, if you screwed up and you figured out that you couldn't put your heat shrink on before you put that connector on and you need to take this back off, all you need to do is take a pick or a pocket screwdriver, push the wires in and then depress down on that tab and hold it and you can slide this back off. So it's a fully serviceable connector. Okay, with our harness taped back down to the floor, you can see the power end is terminated. We still have our connectors on at the seats and then we have our ground wires hanging off. So now I'm going to sheathe it because I don't know what length my ground wires need to be until I put it back into the truck. And at that point, we'll um, heat shrink the ends where both the connectors are and cut those to length and put our ring connectors or ring terminals on. But to sheath this thing, I'm going to use this half inch black with a white tracer split loom. And this stuff here looks like this and basically peels open. But this is really nice. It's flexible. It's fabric. And it stands up to abrasion, abrasion and chafing very, very well. Okay, so I'm gonna be feeding this in here. I'm gonna leave my ground wire exposed. And pull that out at any time. Make yourself a slight incision right here, just like that. And that will actually allow us to tuck this harness sheathing into that connection. And then I'll show you guys the proper way to tape all this up. So with our harness sheathed in both directions. So the proper way to tape this is actually to pull the harness slightly out and you can use electrical tape for this, but I actually have cloth tape. It looks pretty much like grip tape that you'd put on a baseball bat or hockey stick or anything like that, but this is actually made for electrical. Just like this. Okay, so now that's firmly attached to that. So now that's coming from the inside of that harness. We're going to wrap over. So now that we're taped up on our harness and our sheathing is on, we're going to pull all this tight to the ends. And then I've cut inch and a half length of heat shrink tubing. And that's going to go on here. And I usually give myself about a quarter inch overlap. And I'm going to heat that. 
So that takes care of the Anderson power pole side. And that's that. So now all I have to do is go lay this in the truck and figure out where we're gonna ground it to. I'm gonna add my ring terminals and we'll be done. All right, so that's in. I've got a stud right here that I'll probably ground this one to, and there should be a matching stud over there. Gotta find the right size nuts for those, and crimp my ring terminals on. That's as simple as stripping this back and crimping on the ring terminal. Um, so there's nothing, no, no magic there. So hopefully that gives you guys a, an idea of how to make a custom harness. And like I said, this is simple, it's two wires, nothing really magical going on here, but, um, gives you guys a, a little bit of a look into the process of doing a harness properly and making sure that all your connections are right and and how to hold your sheathing in place um, the other thing that I'm going to do when I pull this out is if I pull this ground wire out here the same way you saw me tape up the center where the two harnesses or the two ends of the harnesses met and do the exact same thing here I'm gonna open this up wrap around the ground wire and then I'm gonna wrap the harness as well so that way that this thing holds in place and it won't inadvertently pull the power wire out of the sheathing along with it um, down the road later on. So we, we want to protect this thing at, a, at all costs to make sure that we don't have a short and electrical fire. That's usually where most, most people drop the ball is they just run it in the sheathing or they wrap it in tape and they call it good. What they don't think about is it's rubbing here or that the, the pedestal for the seat is right here and this is rubbing back and forth chafing as it's going off road or down the road even even on the highways. Um, one extra step of protection that you could do is actually make a slit inside on the carpet or in this case the vinyl flooring and run this underneath all of this and that would give it one more layer of protection to help prevent chafing or anything of that nature. Um, which I'll probably end up doing to be honest. I'll probably run it down there because the factory harness runs right in this trough right here. So I'll probably run it out through the exact same spot. But that should give you guys at least a good idea of what it takes to build a harness and to figure out how to measure it and lay it into the vehicle.